Hey, Seth David here from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, the newly launched SethDavid.com. And of course, where you go for one on one private education sessions with me over at SchoolOfAnswers.com. Over here at SethDavid.com, you'll find I've created this area on accounting for startups. And we've already got a few things in here. If you just go to news and go by industry and go to startups, I know startups is not truly an industry, but it, it kind of just seemed to fit well there, right? It's a major category of businesses. So go there and you'll get this section. And by the time you're watching this video, this video and the related blog post, of course, will be posted here in this very same section. So come here, get up to speed on accounting for startups, how this works, what this looks like, what this can look like. And don't forget that at nerdenterprises.com, if you're looking for help, better yet, if you're looking for somebody to just handle this for you so you can focus on getting your product to market and not have to worry about keeping track of the accounting and bookkeeping, we're here for you, nerdenterprises.com. Just come over to here and uh, fill out our contact form and we'll get back to you and we can discuss our services and how we can help you and of course what it'll cost and all of that great stuff and once again, if you want some one-on-one -on -one training, direct help, private education sessions, that's right here at schoolofanswers.com. Now let's take a look at the next segment in accounting for startups. And we've already laid out some stuff, right? I started out by having you sketch out uh, a rough list of what some of your expenses might look like and the frequency uh, of occurrence. Uh, then we started laying out kind of a business model where we actually laid out these expenses on a timeline. Then we looked at how to expand on one of these. So we looked at salaries for software development and we created this tab where we could analyze based on the different developers that we have and the different salaries they might be paid, how this all adds up month over month. And then that of course flows back here to the business model by formula. Then we looked at creating a template so that you can do this with any expense account. And that's all here in this template. Now, if you want to copy the template, uh, you'll see the link posted wherever you're watching this. Just check the description or the write-up if you're on SethDavid.com. Come over here to File and choose Make a Copy, and that will make a copy of this Google Sheet into your own My Drive folder in Google Docs, and then you'll be able to access it, rename it, move it wherever you want, and of course, have at it in terms of using this for your own business. Now we want to take a look at the next phase of development. It's time to start tracking the actual expenses. So how do we do that? Let's add in a new tab here. And we are going to call this tab register. And that's just what it's going to be. It's, it's going to be like an account register. And if you're on the site with the write-up, if you're on YouTube, by the way, just check the description for the link over to the write-up. You're going to want the write-up on a video like this because I'm going to be referencing it, as you can see, in terms of what's there and how that gets from there to what we're doing here. So I listed out a series of columns that we want to create, right? And this is the information you need to describe about a transaction. And keep in mind, I'm also taking into account that at some point there will be income to record. And I also have some things in here that you may wonder about, which I referenced in the write-up, that uh, really just lend themselves to better reporting later on which we'll see in a future video. So bear with me on this. If you're not clear why there would be, for, and, and let me just, let me not talk in vague terms. Let me be very specific. So we have the transaction date. That's probably the very first important piece of information that comes to mind. When did this transaction occur? Then we have the month and year that I listed. And this is the first thing you may be wondering about. Why do we need that? I've got the transaction date. For now, just rest assured that this is going to help us get some great reporting out of this later on when we're done because it's going to enable us to group transactions by month and or by year or by year and then month within that. So really, really uh, handy little thing there. And you'll see as we go on. We need the paid date because we might have invoices that get paid. So I want to distinguish the paid date versus the transaction date. And it's better if I spell it right. It looks more better when I spell it right. So we have the paid date. We have the transaction type. And it's all going to come together. We have an invoice number for when we're actually posting an invoice that needs to get paid. A check number for when we're writing a check. Product or service list. And we have paid from account, right? So if we pay for something from a bank account or a credit card account, that's what's going to go there. We have a name, a name type, so we can distinguish vendors versus customers and so on. And then we have a category, 
which is going to describe the nature of the income or the expense that we're describing here. So if it's an expense, I need to know what kind of expense. Maybe it's office supplies. If it's income, I need to know. Is it consulting income? Is it income from the sale of a subscription for my new product that I'm a startup software developer, you know, that we're developing, right? So that's what the category is going to be all about. And then we have a category type. And this is just going to give us the information we need to create a report that works something like a balance sheet or a profit and loss. So we can distinguish which account types go on which reports. We can filter them and say, only show me assets, liabilities, and equity so that we can get a balance sheet out of this. And then finally, we'll put in the amount. Uh, you may want to add things as you go here. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but this is a pretty complete list based on having done this a few times. So I want you to stop and pause the video at this point and catch up with me. Go open up Google Sheets or get your copy of this and make sure you're up to speed. And by the time you get your copy of this, there may be information filled in. So if you're just getting started at this level, at this stage, then get the copy and delete all the information other than the headers. Because then we're going to want to start recording transactions and I want to show you what that looks like. So let's start with a simple transaction. Uh, we'll start with today's date, the day I'm recording this. A uh, little trick in Google Sheets, same thing as in Excel, control and the colon slash semicolon button stamps in today's date. Now the month and year you're not going to put in manually. This is going to be derived by formula. So let me show you how to write this formula. It's actually really easy. Equals um, month, open parentheses, and you point to that. Notice it brings back a four. We're going to address that next. Next one equals year open parentheses and point to the transaction date. So we get uh, the year works fine, but the month I don't really want a number four. I want the month of April there. So we're going to create something here called tables. And let's create another tab. And we'll call this tables. And initially we just want the numbers one through 12 for the months. And here we're going to bring in the description. Now, here's the thing. Because I want to have this sorted in its proper order, and if I just bring in, let's say, January for the month of January, when I go to sort that in a report later on, it's going to sort it alphabetically. And I want it to sort it based on the numeric value of the month, right? So what I'm going to do is in the description, I have 01 January. And the reason for 01, and this needs to be text. So let's do that again. Put a single quote, 01 January. Right. And this way, when I do use it in reports, it's going to sort in proper order. And the reason for the double digits, of course, is when I do get into the double digit month numbers, um, everything will still line up well. So little details like this matter. Zero to February. Let's see if it'll autofill it for me. Nope. <laughs> it auto it, it increases the number, but not doing what I need it to. So zero three March. Zero four April. 05 May, 06 June, 07 July, August, September, October, November. Oops, didn't want that. And December. Now, we're going to get a little sophisticated here because I want to make this easy for us to update things in the main register. And the more sophisticated we can get at this kind of level, the easier it makes it for us down the road. So I've got this whole range highlighted now. And what I want to do is I want to come over here and I want to insert names. Actually, we go to data. Sorry, in Excel, it would be an insert function. Here it's data. So we go to named ranges. And it recognizes the range I've got highlighted, and let's call this months. All right, so I'm just typing the word months in here to name it. What this does is it, it makes the next thing I'm going to show you very easy. So let's go back to the register. And now we want to write a formula that says look up the number of the month based on the date to my left and return the actual description that I've put in that table. So I'm just going to go in and edit the formula. So equals. If open parentheses, V lookup. Actually, never mind the if. Let's just do equals V lookup. The month of A to comma, and here's where we insert the range 
months, comma two, comma false. Now what this does is it says look up the look up the number of the month to the left, which in this case is going to return a value of four. Look it up in the table I created called months, and if you find a match, bring me back what's in the second column, which if you remember from a second ago is the list based on the sort of uh, text-based data that I want to bring back. And then the, the false part here just tells it only return an exact match. In other words, if somehow we ended up with a value of 4.5, it wouldn't give a result. We know that's never going to happen in this case, but it's just a good practice to always write your formulas this way, just in case. Because also, if you've made a mistake somewhere, this will help flush out those kind of mistakes. Enter, and sure enough, it gives me exactly what I want, which is 04 April. All right, everything else for the rest of this, and we can close this named ranges now, is going to be pretty straightforward. And then we're going to stop after entering one transaction. I want you to catch up because then in the next video, we're going to take this even further. We're going to add some more transactions, but we're also going to show you how to create drop down lists to make the data entry consistent here, which again ensures better reporting down the road when we're ready to do that. So the paid date in this case would be the same date. The transaction type will say is a check. Uh, the invoice number is not applicable. The check number, let's say, is 123. Uh, the product or service will leave blank. Paid from, uh, we'll need a bank account, so main checking. We'll just call it now. The payee is going to be Staples. Uh, the name type is going to be a vendor. The category office supplies. The category type is going to be expense. And then the amount, let's say, was 145.82. Right? Sounds like a good random number that I just made up off the top of my head. And that's it. And now the only other thing I'll show you is as we add transactions and scroll down the list, we don't want our headers to disappear off the screen. So on the second row and in the leftmost column, we're going to go to View, Freeze, and we'll freeze one row. And that way, no matter how far down you scroll, you'll always be able to see the headers. And then I can just highlight the whole spreadsheet and double click the headers just to adjust the size of the column so that everything kind of fits. That, my friends, is enough for now. Get caught up with me because in the next video, I'm going to show you how to take this two or three or five or maybe 10 steps further. That's all. As always, if you have any questions, just post a comment right here on the blog. If you're on YouTube, post a comment in the description of the video. Uh, or just reach out to me. You know how to reach me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com. Find me on Facebook. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter. Wherever you go, look for Nerd Enterprises. You'll probably find me on there, wherever there is. And that, my friends, is accounting for startups and how to start tracking your actual expenses when you're bootstrapping your accounting. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.